Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Scientists believe in things, not in person. This is Madame Marie Curie, you might be knowing. She is a very, you know, uh, great scientist. And let us recall what we learnt in the last lecture. We basically looked at series reactions, parallel reactions and reverse reaction, how to handle basically and what are the, its ramifications, because it is very important to handle the multi-step chemistry, particularly the elementary reactions, right. And uh, today we will be uh, talking about basically the chain reactions, because it is, you know, which is very important. Chemical reaction, you know, not only takes place in series and parallel, it will be in the chain, right. And uh, chain reaction is very important and uh, you might be knowing that, uh, you know, chain reaction also not only occurs in in chemical reaction, it also occurs in nuclear right, reaction. So, and uh, it also occurs in our day to day life, right. We can say, oh, there is a chain reaction, that means suddenly something is happening, right. So, uh, we will have to be, uh, you know, aware about that. In reality, combustion process involves several reactions and um, the whatever we see that uh, stoichiometric chemical reactions, whatever we consider, we are always happy with the stoichiometry, right. But that need not to occur in nature as such, because uh, there is a lot of things which will be going on. So, the if you look at, uh, we will be now classifying these reactions into four categories, which those are uh, basically chain initiating reactions, chain branching reaction, chain carrying reaction and chain terminating, right. So, we will have to see who initiates you know the things, because initiator is very very important. You know like in our spiritual uh, fiefdom, the guru is known as the initiator, right. And even in teaching also that is, they are basically initiator. Is a, you, student has to learn, you know, like, okay. So, the therefore, initiation is very important. And similarly, branching, it will be branch into something and it will be carrying forward. The meaning is very obvious, like means you will be taking carrying forwards and it will be also terminating, right. Now, question arises, how you will, uh, you know, define these things? how I will identify whether it is a chain initiating or chain branching or chain reacting. For example, if I consider, right, this is, let us say, if I say this is H 2 plus O 2 is going to H plus H plus O 2, right. Are you getting? Now, what kind of reaction it is? Let me write down another reaction O 2 m is getting into O plus O plus m. You know m is basically third body reactions. And I can write down another reaction O 2 plus H is getting into O H plus O, right. Now, in this reaction, which is chain initiating, which is chain terminating, which is chain carrying or which is chain branching, right. Please think about from this. Let us say, let me write down further, right, H plus O 2 plus M, H O 2 plus M. O H plus H 
plus m getting into s 2 o plus m. <coughs> now, if you look at if I say this is you know reaction 1, this is 2, 3, 4, this is 5 right or I am uh, writing for basically to say that is a reaction right. Now, if you look at the first reaction, what you call? It is initiating. Why? Because the stable species are there in the reactant. These are stable species. These two are stable species. And then the radicals are being formed. Right? But if you look at this O2, and M O plus O is the same thing, O 2 is a stable species. Of course, M you do not know, M is a third body, you know like it is not participating, but it is, its presence is required, right. You cannot call it as a catalyst reaction, okay. But however, this presence is required, you know, like let us say there is an old man in the house, but his presence, he will not do anything, but his presence is required because he will give inspiration to for you people to do work, you know. Right, <laughs> like your grandfather or grand grandfather, right? You won't be doing anything. So similarly, third body is like that. Okay, so this is again chain initiating, but the reaction three or the third reaction O two plus H going to O H plus O. What is this reaction? Is a branching or carrying? It will be branching. How I will decide? How I will decide? If the ratio of number of free radicals in the product to the reactant, that of the reactant, then greater than 1, it is chain branching, right. For example, in this case, in the reaction 3, these are 2, right, and in this side radical is 1. So, therefore, it is ratio, ratio of radicals, right, between the product and the reactant, right. I can say the ratio is greater than 1. So, therefore, it is a chain branching reaction. Therefore, this is a chain branching reaction, right. And similarly, you can say chain carrying reaction when this ratio is equal to 1. This is equal to 1. That means, if you look at this reaction, reaction 4, this is a radical, right? HO2, and this side the radical is H. That means 1, 1, right? Reactant, the product side radical 1 and reactant side radical 1 therefore, ratio is 1. So, this ratio I can say okay, ratio is equal to 1 and in chain termination what it would be stable species will be that is 1, but if you consider it from the radical point of view it will be always less than 1 right. The it will be ratio is less than 1. Therefore, that is known as basically terminating and chain initiation is will be other way around right. The always the reactant side will be stable species and product there will be some radicals right. It will be greater you know uh, than 1 also it is similar to chain branching, but keep in mind that in the reactant side always stable species will be there right. It will be 0, radical will be 0 in the stable species in chain branching radical will be there in the reactant as well in the product. That means, it will be there in the reactant and product. Okay. Now, that is very clear you can identify which is chain branching, chain initiating, chain carrying and chain terminating reactions by this process or the procedure. Now, let us look at you know this chain branching and uh, if it is more radicals are formed in the product than the 
reactant then it may lead to explosion but what do you mean by explosion any idea any idea what is the meaning of the uh, meaning of explosion you might have heard like no. <coughs> uncontrolled combustion you were saying for example if I say there is a pressure cooker which is busted out right there is no reaction taking place yes or no is the reaction taking place pressure cooker I will heat give lot of heat and then it will bust out or I will take a balloon you know and give a lot of this thing there is no chemical reaction taking place okay but it will bust out that means there will be sudden pressure huh? release, of release of energy which will we can define that way that is a little better one right here what we are doing right this is basically we are saying look chemical reaction is taking place right but in nuclear reaction nuclear explosion right because there will be nuclear reaction will be going on but basic is the idea is that there will be burst of energy which will be causing some kind of a you know pressure change sudden and temperatures and other things. So, therefore, we can say that in our case it is a very rapid combustion of fuel and oxidizer that takes place leading to a violent release of energy that is very important violent energy of release right resulting high pressure and temperature change right this will be of course this this is caused due to the high pressure and temperature in a very close container right so therefore explosion can be divided in two categories one is thermal explosion right other is chain branching explosion or you can say chemical explosion you know you can say in our case of course there will be nuclear explosion right so thermal explosion means basically heat liberated due to initial phase of accumulated temperature or you are supplying the heat right heat is being supplied and the loss is minimized or loss is not there or loss is less as compared to the heat input to the a container closed container particularly explosion won't occur it is open you know are you getting unless pressure builds up and other things it won't burst it out right so that is basically occurring this thermal explosion occurring due to insufficient heat loss that means more energy is being pumped into right the balance if you look at more em energy is getting in chain branching uh, chain branching explosion in this case what will be happening this is due to basically accumulation of chain carrying radicals for example in chemical reaction h oh you know these are all very uh, you know uh, what you call problematic radicals i can't say problematic radicals problematic radical from the explosion point of view for the chemical reaction without that you can't have a chemical reaction right so those are good but if it is misuse you know then that will be creating a problem of explosion and this is being accumulated that means whatever being generated is not being consumed right it's like your uh, the rich people became going astray you know they are accumulating so much of money right or so much of power being accumulated it will cause the explosion so <laughs> therefore that is a anything you know accumulation is a bad thing that's why our uh, you know scripture says you always donate keep the balance <laughs> right so now let us consider a case in which let's say stoichiometric hydrogen oxygen mixture is there right and i am keeping this it's like a bomb you can say it's a closed vessel and supplying the hydrogen and oxygen after that i am closing it right these are all closed right that means is a close right is a closed bomb kind of valve control you know volume is remaining constant i can close this okay and then i am increasing this temperature temperature bath means where i can control the temperature right so 
that temperature bath I can goes on increasing. Let us say this T, T of the temperature bath, then there will be heat transfer, right? And it will be getting into from here to that, the heat will be getting into, right? Now, what will happen? There will be at if it is at ambient temperature, if T is equal to 298 Kelvin, start with what will happen? There will be no reactions, you know, like all the re forward reaction will be same as the backward reaction, almost it will be nothing will be happening. But if I go on increasing the temperature further, then some chemical reaction will start and it will be basically stable, then it will be metastable kind of condition earlier, you know, it became unstable, right. And then reaction will be taking place, if reaction takes place, heat being released, right. If it is heat released, what will happen is the con constant volume pressure will go up and again there will be some accumulation of thing will be occurring. Let us look at what is happening. If I say that hydrogen you know will be reacting with a third body right and getting into this H and H radicals. This is basically what kind of reaction this is first one what is the reaction here <coughs> chain initiation right. reaction. Now, this is endothermic in nature. See, unless you give heat, it will not occur. Okay. Are you getting? But there is another reaction. This is again hydrogen oxygen is uh, reacting with third body. It will going to S 2 O 2 right M. And again, this is the endothermic. Keep in mind that this is if you look at this is the higher right as compared to this reaction, because these two can go parallel, you know, like hydrogen can decompose or hydrogen get into S2O2 and one is and this will be the first reaction if you look at this one, right, will be occurring at a much higher temperature as compared to second one, is not it, because the energy requirement for, you know, the 230, it will be heat has to be supplied for this, for this reaction take place, right. So, now, if it is occurring, there will be certain temperature, if you look at you will go to the self ignition temperature, if you go on increasing right, because I am not igniting here, then the reaction will start, which will be vigorous, right. The pressure will increase, if I pressure will increase, what will happen? Explosion will occur or not, right. Let us say as I told to begin with the stoichiometric mixture is taken, is kept a container stoichiometric mixture at a certain pressure. Right. And you will go on increasing temperature in that container by the uh, what you call um, your uh, like thermal bath, right? By that I can control the temperature. And let us say it is increased beyond 733 Kelvin, where the reaction will start and then you know it may lead to explosion, right. So, the rapid chemical reactions will be take place leading to the explosion, let us say at certain pressure, right, at certain pressure, let us say uh, uh, P B, right, at pressure P B it is occurring, right. Now, I will reduce the pressure, right, okay. what will happen, will it like uh, explosion will occur or not, right. Actually explosion will occur, even if you are reducing, right. But generally notion is that, if pressure is there, you release, no, because this is a chemical reaction, you do not know what is happening. And if tank pressure is pressurized beyond certain values, right, then you know again explosion may occur, right. Now, in between some range explosion would not be occurring, even though temperature is high, higher than the its self ignition temperature and the pressure is moderate, right. So, if you look at that, if you conduct this experiment and you will find a curve like this, right. If you look at suppose I am here. 
right at P V and P V that means P A to P V this explosion is occurring this is this is a range where explosion will be occurring. But now I will increase the pressure right ok what will happen there will be no explosion even though I am increasing but if I reduce the pressure explosion will be occurring right and there is no explosion but if I will go beyond in this region but if I will go beyond this right then explosion for, for the same temperature I am talking about at the same temperature keep in mind because there are two variable I cannot change just to explain this thing I am saying I am keeping I am conducting expense as the temperature will be remaining same only pressure will be changing. So, pressure beyond that there will be explosion because this region also explosion is occurring right. Now, it is quite interesting this curve is basically S shape you can say inverted S shape right S we write other way around this is inverted S shape curve and this is valid for what is that hydrogen oxygen system right or you can say N 2 system. or I can say this is hydrogen oxygen system right and similar curves you can get for CO and uh, SO and other things I will not be discussing, but you can look at maybe Kuo book or some other combustion book you may find right <coughs> not in my book. <coughs> now, question is why it is happening we will have to look at it qualitatively looking at the some reactions right. And there are uh, regimes, three regimes are there. This is the first limit, right? Regime, and this is your second limit, right? This is your second limit, and this is your third limit, beyond which you know explosion will be occurring. And let us consider these reactions. See, you can take more reactions as well, because it's not that all these. And only this much reaction will be occurring there will be several reactions I have shown right I have taken only just to explain certain points right. Let us look at what is happening in this reaction I have already explained that in the reaction 1 right at uh, high temperature it will be occurring because this is endothermic in nature right and as compared to the reaction 2 these are all chain initiating reactions right. But at low temperature and high pressure, S2 is dissociated by R2, this reaction 2, right. And for reaction 1 and reaction 3 to 5, except reaction 2, the if you look at reaction rate is proportional to P square. Why? Because bimolecular reactions, right. These are bimolecular reactions, right. Yes or no? So, therefore, the second order reaction is there, therefore, it is required to the. But whereas, reaction 2, this is the reaction, right, this reaction, and reaction 6, this reactions, right, for that, this is reaction rate is proportional to power to the pressure of 3, pressure cube. That means, you know it will be more the reaction 2 and reaction 6 will be more pressure dependent as compared to the reaction 1 and 3 to 5. These are all if you look at chain uh, branching, if you look at reaction 3 is chain branching and reaction 4 uh, what you call reaction 4 is what? This is chain carrying, this is your chain carrying is not it and this is your chain branching and uh, this is again what you call chain carrying right this is also chain carrying. And these reaction if you look at the reaction 7 to 10 these are all terminating right because you know 2 H or 2 going to S 2 and the stable space is in the oxygen it is getting into wall and then converting. And similarly here and uh, H of course can you know bumped into wall and reduce energy is will be OH also. So and keep in mind that for reaction 1 and reaction 3 to 6 involves what is that H because these are all radical H O 
right o h right o h and h o 2 these are all you know radicals which are required to convert the hydrogen into water right and of course, 9 and 10 uh, I have already told these are basically O H and O H are lost getting into or colliding with the wall of the container right. <coughs> because this will be having lot of energy level it will moving. So, uh, if you look at uh, at the low pressure what is happening if uh, HO2 is being formed right by the reaction R6, this reaction right, HO is formed. And if it is happening at low pressure, this is a very you know what you call in it cannot say inert, but it is un, not much reactive as compared to H and OH, okay, HO2, although it is a radical. What will happen? It will go and heat to the wall and lose its energy, then as a result, you know. It, it will not lead to the explosion, but whereas a high pressure what will happen it will be getting and bumping into others and then some radicals are formed. So, that it will be leading to explosion. So, therefore, at between P A and P V radical formation by R 1 to R 6 right okay, are much higher the more radicals are formed as compared to the reaction R 7 and R 10. R 7 and 10 is what? This is radical being terminated, right. These are terminated, means consumed, right, uh, without much uh, you know uh, branching occurring. So, therefore, this P right radical formation are higher. So, therefore, there will be explosion in this region, right, P A and P B. But in P A, B and C, R 6 is more predominant, right this one and uh, more H O 2 will be formed and which are not that reactive and if the pressure is moderate you know like in between it is not very high right. You can consider this to be relatively low then there will be no explosion right provided in this region between P V and P C no explosion right. So, and if you go beyond P C, P C values beyond this pressure this is the higher values then what will happen? HO2 and S2 is going to the S2O2 and this will be uh, right and H is radical is one formed and S2O2 is going to OH and OS. So, more radicals are being formed and that will be because HO2 which was not acting in this region between P, C and P, V, but when pressure increases that became more active because they are colliding with the hydrogen colliding and then giving to the more radicals and these radicals are formed the more pool that means more explosion will be occurring. Are you getting this point? So, therefore, uh, we need to I mean like you know uh, look at the importance of the reactions in certain pressure range which is more important and that will lead to the explosion and certain reactions are not important particularly this is being explained you know in terms of chain branching reactions right. Because if it is branch further then what will happen explosion if it is branch being stopped it is not going into then it will be what you call explosion will not occur. So, if you look at if you know these things you can avoid the explosions to occur also you can devise something. And that is being done routinely in our case. Suppose there is a problem. So, what will happen? You clamp, you know, 144. Suppose there is a some riot because they will be spreading. Instead of you 44 and then control it. Similar way, you can also control the explosion provided you know which radicals and which is the pre, what is the pressure range, what will be, you can, you know, thwart the occurrence of the explosion. So, with this, I will stop over. We will be uh, discussing the next lecture about basically how to handle elementary reactions by some certain techniques we will be uh, developing to uh, minimize the number of reactions and also how to handle right. Thank you very much.